But it's okay, I think the room is not that big, so everyone can hear you. <laughs> and we're done. All right, let's get started. Arena, you are undefeated so far at Grand Slams this year. Just talk about the match today, and what were you most pleased with with your performance? Yeah, it was it was emotionally tough match, and I'm super happy that um, yeah that I get this win. Uh, um, in the first games, uh, things didn't work well for me, but I'm happy that I was able to get through this uh, match. <clears throat> well done, Arena. Congrats on the win. Um, it was tough in the beginning, maybe some nerves, first match of the tournament, all that stuff. Um, how were you able to unlock yourself from 3 2 down in the first? Yeah, um, magically. <laughs> um, yeah, it was tough, uh, tough first round. And, uh, um, Especially after such tough loss in, in Rome. I mean, I know I was exhausted, but still this match is in your head. So, yeah, emotionally I was a little bit nervous, nervous at the beginning. And, uh, yeah, I was, just, I was just trying to keep fighting, keep, uh, keep finding my rhythm, keep uh, um, adjusting to the, to the court. And, um, yeah, like point by point I start uh, uh, building my game. And, I, uh, yeah, I, I start playing better and uh, with more rhythm. And, uh, yeah, I was able to go for my shots without, much, uh, without, without a lot of mistakes. You can just throw it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if you're good in catching. <laughs> Irina, congratulations on the win. You said in your court interview, and you've just told us now, it was an emotionally challenging match for you today. But to me, you always seem like a happy person. You smile and laugh a lot. Sometimes we see you sing or dance. <laughs> Do you make a conscious decision to be a positive person or are you naturally positive? And are you affected sometimes about how people see you and the things they say about you? Uh, well, first of all, I'm naturally uh, like a positive person. On court, it just, it just uh, my style of the game, I play aggressive, so I'm more aggressive on court, but of course, yeah, I'm, I, I seems, seems to be more positive. And I, I focus on uh, things like what they're saying about me, like on positive things. Like if people don't like me or hate me, I kind of understand that it's okay. It's their their decision, their, their opinion. And uh, I don't wanna prove them that, that I'm a good person or bad person. I just focus on people who likes me. Arena, it was obviously a bit confusing at the end. It was all a bit um, fractious. Uh, you were talking to the umpire and then to your box as well. Can you just talk us through what was going through your head at that moment and what kind of your reaction to it was? Yeah, I, I couldn't understand what's going on because, I mean, we all know that uh, Ukrainian girls will not shake uh, hands with us. So it's kind of not a surprise for us, but probably for, for the public today it was a surprise. So they, 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 they saw it as uh, disrespect me as a player, so that's why I was bullying to her. But at first I thought it, they were bullying me and I was like, I was a little confused and I was like, okay, what should I do? And I spoke to my team, make sure that I understand it right, but then I kind of understand what hap what's going on and then I, I was uh, saying thank you to the public, <laughs> kind of like, I felt sorry for what I like, what I did uh, at the first. <laughs> Irina, congrats on the win. Um, you called it emotionally kind of um, a tough match emotionally. Do you feel because of the obvious kind of more attention that will be on the match because of the matchup of Belarusian player against the Ukrainian player, does that kind of weigh on your mind a bit, knowing that there's going to be a bit more kind of uh, attention on how it will end with the handshake and all that? Um, yeah, probably because of that. and. Uh, as well, like the first match of the tournament, the, th the second thing is you're playing against Ukrainian and you never know what's going to happen. They can, you never know, you know, like how people will, will they support you or not? I was worried like that people will be against me and I don't like to play when people so much against me. So I was worried about that. And yeah, the beginning was very emotional, but then I get through it and I start playing tennis and focus on myself instead of the rest of the things. 
I have a, I have a mic now. Um, Irina, um, with this, Atral Angarodia may become the world number one. As a world number one, you should be a role model. I think you are already a role model for many people, for many tennis players in the world. And as world number one is a very, um, is a very difficult status. And what is your message to the world? And because meanwhile, um, this situation with Ukrainian players show that um, you're twisting it as, uh, as if Ukrainians hate you, but they do not say that they hate you. The only thing they do want to know from you is either you condemn the war or you support the war. This is the only thing that Ukrainian play, play, players want to hear, and you're avoiding this question. You're coming up with different uh, answers. So uh, you say it's politics, even though missiles launched from Belarus does not choose if it's a politician or a tennis player. So what is your message as the world number one? And how can you sort it out with Ukrainian players that there is no more words hate or something like that? Thank you. First of all, I'm not saying that they are saying they hate me. Every, you did. Every... You did many times. No, but listen, first of all, when I get the question about Ukrainians, they ask me like, so you know that they hate you. Like not personally or, or politically, they asking the question. So I'm answering the question that if they hate me, like I don't feel anything like that. About the war situation, I said it many, many times. Nobody in this world, Russian athletes or Belarusian athletes, support the war. Nobody. How can we support the war? Nobody. No, normal people will never support it. Why we have to go loud and say that things? That's like, this is like one plus one. It's two. You know, it's it's. Of course, we don't support war. And if we could affect anyhow the war, make, like if we could like stop it, we would do it. But unfortunately, it's not in our hands. That's the main question. That's the, the part about Ukrainians. The secondly, as the world number one, what's my message? Um, okay, let's get back to the country. I'm from a small country from Belarus who was working really hard to get get to this level. Um, and this is the message to a lot of young athletes who who's from small countries, um, who don't have um, enough um, money, who who is just from the small countries, that they can do well in this sport, and um, that they have to work hard and believe in themselves, and they can do whatever they want to. This is my main message as world, world number one, and I like. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm uh, if I'm a role model for for a lot of uh, people, or as I said, there's going to be people who don't like me. There is going to be people who likes me. So I'm focusing on people who likes me and who want me to be um, the best. You know, I want to show my best tennis. I want people to enjoy uh, tennis matches, to enjoy my matches. So this is my message: to bring the joy for people. I don't know. Can I just ask you about the post-match handshake as well? The crowd, you said the crowd thought it was disrespectful. Do you think it's disrespectful that they don't shake hands with you? No, and, do, I... and do you think she deserved to be booed? Um, I don't think so. I understand why, why they're not shaking hands with us. I, I can imagine if they're going to shake, shake hands with us and then what's going to happen to them from, from Ukrainian side. So I understand that and, and I understand that this is not kind of like personally, you know. Um, that's it. And I think uh, probably she, she don't, des not probably, I think she don't deserve to be, yeah, to leave the court uh, that way. Any final questions about the match here? Yes. Uh, well, um, Irina, uh, just wondering on, on the conditions, it's, it's supposed to be very hot the whole two weeks. Just wondering for, on clay, what kind of conditions do you prefer and what, what do you think helps your game? Because um, obviously it, sometimes when it's rainy and heavy, it can be hard for big hitters, you know. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's difficult uh, conditions for me. And after Rome, I had uh, three weeks to prepare physically, mentally to this uh, to these courts, and um, it's it's tough. But uh, I really like it because I have an extra time to uh, to adjust and to go for my shots. Yes, last question here. Irina, similar question. Uh, we know you can do well on clay, and we've seen it at Madrid, Stuttgart. Here is obviously different and tougher for you. Why is it tougher? And how have you maybe improved in, at playing in these conditions that we see more in Rome and Roland Garros? Yeah, it used to be tougher because uh, probably physically I wasn't ready for this kind of courts because uh, it's slower, so you have to play longer points, so you have to be str physically strong. And yeah, I worked a lot uh, over, over last years. Uh, to improve this uh, uh, this part of my game, and I think right now I I'm I'm ready more than ever for this kind of courts, and um, I'll do everything I can to uh, to show my best tennis and to to go as far as I can here at the French Open.